But first, I really want to thank uh, the uh, organizing committee to have invited me over. I really felt very honored uh, with this invitation. And I think already from this morning, I had such a great feeling about how everything is going. So I think we really did an incredible, nice job and well job. And uh, so you should uh, compliment yourself a little bit for that as well. Well, my background is in DMT, and I have, uh, I'm from the Netherlands, where I work uh, in a hospital setting, in a mental health department, which is quite regulated in the Netherlands uh, when it comes to art therapies. We have a, a registration system that is uh, uh, also um, parallel with the guideline system, so we have a quite delineated uh, uh, function there. And, uh, I do that work for quite some years now, and I have been uh, uh, also uh, uh, working in the educations and trainings in, uh, in the Netherlands as a supervisor <coughs> and also as a uh, teacher, and also elsewhere in uh, Europe. Throughout all these different uh, professional activities, I always felt that I still stay very rooted in my dance background that I had many, many, many years ago. I have a lot of psychotherapy training ahead on that. But still, when I'm in a, in a movement space with a client, um, I feel that there's where I go back to, to get a notion on what is at hand here and what are we going to do here and what is it about. And when this theme of the conference came, uh, um, I thought, well, that is really what I think in our practice we do a lot, that we do work towards resilience. And fortunately, Hilda this morning already gave us a broad overview on the theoretical concept, so I won't go so much into that, but I will uh, just uh, move on from that a little bit. So just to give an idea, what I try to do in this presentation is to uh, give a dense and formed frame of reference to resilience, and we'll come to see how that might work out. And the stepping stones in that are that I will give you just briefly uh, a sort of markation of which aspects of resilience I take for this uh, presentation. As we have seen already that there's a broad a variety of definitions. And then from that I will introduce uh, this dance informed perspective, as I call it, and discuss the contributions that might be delivered from that to resilience. I have one request for you. Uh, I realize that a lot of people are taking pictures in between and sometimes there will be photos in a slide or there will be a short video fragment and that's why I wanted to ask you not to take pictures of my slides. I will be very happy to send them to you by email. Just if you want them, contact me afterwards and I really will be happy to send you the, the handout material. Yeah, so that's just for me more easy because otherwise I feel I have to uh, always be in charge of that. Thank you for that. Well, resilience, um, as we have heard this morning already, is uh, the individual's capacity to cope with challenges in life events throughout lifespan uh, that might be specific contexts like a war uh, zone is, of course, uh, a major uh, uh, context for that. But also in daily life or throughout development, um, resilience is, uh, has to be uh, 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 in uh, a, a person's life to meet all the challenges that uh, kind of uh, um, come on their way. From that, many uh, researchers in resilience define it as a dynamic process of adaptation. We had this discussion on adaptation this morning, and I think the adaptation here, we sh maybe we should replace it into a, a coping or... Huh? So... Um, with that in mind, every time I use the word adaptation, think of coping more than the adaptation that, as it was defined this morning. Um, but so it's the coping with serious threat or adversity. And um, what the, the first uh, researchers on resilience in the 50s, and already 1950s, found that uh, even in very fragile life situations, so when children, for there was a big Hawaiian study uh, where, where a cohort of 1955 children born uh, were followed up, and 
uh, where they found that even the children who grew up in very fragile circumstances seem to cope very well with uh, uh, life events and, and stress and they seem to have built resilience and when they had a look at that they found that all these children did experience shelter or emotional acceptance and respect from a person that was there over a certain span of lifetime so there was some continuity some holding environment maybe we would say from a psychological perspective but there was a place to go and a place to be safe I guess all of you who work with traumatized patients know that this is a very basic thing. You can't do any type of therapy without having a safe place to go. So the very first thing we would do in the dance movement therapy is then to make that safe place. So here already we have a movement related theme in, uh, in this concept of resi resilience. So in the same uh, line of thoughts a German uh, a developmental psychologist, uh, uh, a Professor Froehlich, had uh, <coughs> did explore which aspects do contribute to children's resilience uh, or development of resilience. And there we see a lot of uh, things that Hilda mentioned this morning already. And I just give that briefly to you so that you know what my kind of background is that I used for this presentation. And that is inadequate self-other perception. And of course, we do need to uh, be able to make this difference between me and the other to be able to notice, oh, well, that is he or her doing something to me so I can protect me. If I'm in a kind of conflictual state or I can't really make these uh, uh, delineations, then I can't really protect myself or cope with that, what is coming to, towards me then we would need an adequate emotion regulation. I think that goes very well with Hilda explored this morning of the rubber elasticity. <coughs> so you kind of uh, regulate according to the circumstances and you kind of uh, have this flexible regulation in that. And while doing that, I realized, well, here again, we have this flexibility and the regulatory processes we have in our body. We do that through our bodies. We can't do otherwise. That's how we are wired, that's how we are developed, that's how we learned to regulate. <clears throat> then we have this other point, the positive expectancies regarding self-agencies. Now what is agency? Now what is that? That is that you kind of feel, well, I'm fine, I will, I will manage fine. I can do this. I can do this job here now, or I feel that others trust that I can do this job. So that is how we build these positive expectancies. And of course, the problem solved on competences, I think that's quite clear, social competences to make contact, stay in contact, not get into this isolated state, but get wired with other people and regulate stress. So uh, what does happen when people are in life situations where trauma or other input is really overwhelming and kind of... Uh, um, putting resilient systems to a hold or overpower them. So, or in case of over-demanding life challenges, like we have in developmental uh, uh, therapies, I don't know who of you work with children or uh, adolescents or even with adults, Susie, uh, I don't know, but she, she asked that question this morning that adults sometimes relive their childhood patterns once they get a child, and I think they're Again, so when there is a long span in life where we have a kind of very demanding situation, we sometimes get very disturbed in our resilient capacities. And then what we get is that this living, living systems capacities to dynamically adjust and cope that are there through our developmental uh, lines in the life, this goes to frozen state or the capacity to recover <laughs> and to rebound turns into a suppressed state. So the flexibility of the bodily uh, regulation kind of flattens. And then the capacity to center turns into fragmentation. Sometimes that is a protective mechanism 
we had this discussion this morning already about dissociative states, for instance. I do work a lot with people who are in that state. And I really, I feel I have to really respect that very strongly because that is the system's mechanism to protect and to, to <coughs> kind of cope in very diff difficult situations. And that's the same for the uh, capacity to uh, uh, connect and isolate. So I, th I agree with, it, with this discussion this morning that it's not, it's just the one thing that is good and the other thing that's bad. It's sometimes it's this and sometimes that. It's really a contextual thing. Res uh, resilience is not a thing in itself once given and we go through our life with it. It's a thing that we kind of learn and that we uh, vary throughout our lifetime and that will uh, also change. And sometimes one thing is at hand and sometimes less. Well, for us as dance movement therapists, what might dance contribute? And then, um, and for this, I mean <coughs> dance as we use it in dance movement therapy but which is rooted in dance in all types of cultures. So then we are talking about physical activity in a creative context, <clears throat> and physical and creative activities are taken as source to focus perception or to articulate movement expression from that. We are working with the active body-mind integration and living adaptation to other person's movements. Um, we work with the co-creation of interpersonal contact and shapings, not just the therapist, so well, we do this and we do that and we do this and we do that, but we, as a therapist as well, adapt or uh, uh, yeah, adjust to what is in there in the group. And, um, and these shared movement experiences, that is where we get a sense of what is the texture of this relationship we have in here. As we get now, you get a sense of texture about how I am Standing here talking to you, I get a sense of texture of you out there sitting down there. And so that is also a mutual engagement that is happening there. And that's, of course, uh, present in therapy. And that is uh, a real strong thing that is uh, determined in our social cultural practice. Um, I, I felt that already in this conference that we do come from different cultural back backgrounds sometimes. There are people who have, oh, I have to adjust a little bit. Or when I came uh, to Riga, I felt, oh, this felt a little bit well known for me because I'm from a very different part of the Baltic Sea in the north of Germany, near the Danish border, that's where I was born. And somehow this Baltic hmm, culture <laughs> or the urban steel that is kind of, oh, yeah, yeah. that feels like and probably some Hanseatic uh, histories as well. So this is very uh, contextual about. So what are we talking about in terms of movement and therapy? I try to somehow uh, give you an uh, idea about that. Uh, people where I work, they, they, I work with very fragile patients. So people who come in generally don't have this connection. <coughs> if you ask, what do you feel in the body? don't feel so very much. Or sometimes uh, people say, well, I can see this is my hand, but I don't feel it. It is out there, I can see, I know, I've learned that this is my hand, but I don't feel it. So if you ask for uh, uh, tactile sensations, for instance, they can't report about that because they really can't get there. So I guess that that is part of our work that we kind of see for how can we reconnect so that this can be a source for a resilient position. <clears throat> and the other uh, thing is this middle line is that it is in a shared situation. Resilient, we are not resilient on our own in an isolated position. We are resilient, as Hilda talked about this morning, because we have been responded by others, because we have experienced holding environments because we have experienced mirroring environments. That's how we get resilient. And these environments in itself that was so nice and are of course embedded again. But for now I just focus on this very small entity. Okay? <clears throat> and 
Then when we uh, talk in terms of movement about this, I would say, well, that is what we work with. We work with embodied situatedness. We take the movement and the uh, body as kind of uh, information on where am I, what am I doing here. And I call it coming from dance, kinesthetic listening and observing with the dancer's mind, like an uh, authentic movement. The people of you who did uh, uh, work with that know that you kind of really go into this sensing mode is to get informed through your kinesthetic senses to then articulate and bring it out. And then we have this witness that is responsive to it and later on brings it back to us. So there again we have this loop we were talking about. Yeah? So what our aim would be there is to reconnect to the body's movement potential and sense of potential. And I, um, uh, what I forgot to say, I, uh, these movement aspects I'm mentioning are related to the literature of DMTs on resilience. I try to find out which movement themes are in there and what can we differentiate from that. So this is uh, the, the reconnection to sensing, movement, bodiness, is what we get there a lot. Yeah? So for a moment, I just wanted to ask you to maybe get up or, or sit that you can feel yourself a little bit. But what I wanted you to, uh, ask, to, to invite you in is to just find a position for yourself and shuffle it a little bit and see whether you can kind of wake up your kinesthetic senses a little bit to get this information going. And, and feel how you, for yourself, personally, make this connection. Because we as therapists, we, we do that all the time. We move into the space and we have to do this in order to be able to connect to the other. So, if we are there, I wanted to try a little experiment because I know this is a very difficult setting for it, for that as well. Most of you are very movement experienced, so why not let's check it to you. So I wanted to try to get this loose we've seen a little bit here throughout the space. And I will start and just throw movement into the <laughs> audience and we see whether you can take it then from there. And it's not dangerous, uh, I mean different, but try to really bring the movement somewhere where you feel, oh, yeah, receive it. <laughs> Let's see whether you can find far loops maybe sometimes. <laughs> and then see how you from that can get back to yourself and get yourself back seated constant kinesthetic fit. Thank you. So, we already with this small exercise we see that we go into aligning positions, we stretch out into space, we come back to our personal body. So the, these objectives might support alignment. And of course, if we have gone to a bit more activity or more energizing in that, that would stimulate physical activity more than now. And also, somewhere over here, already in this little rhythmic regulation, because we tend to synchronize with others and kind of uh, play in this rhythmic uh, 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 exchange. And we know from all the research of uh, uh, Borges with the vagal theories, from Van der Kolk and Dan Siegel, uh, well, I, I don't name them all now, but you, all that group, all these people, they really helped us a lot to understand what is happening in our embodied systems through these processes and I think that's really their basic concept that they take emotion as an embodied category. Emotion is something that always travels through the body. So that's why of course a dance uh, therapy intervention might have an effect on that and we see more and more DMTs researching on this for instance in the cortisol levels or in the endorphin levels 
So that is where this uh, relates to, and also in the brain uh, 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 sciences, in the neurosciences, we see this. Uh, it started, of course, out very strongly, I guess, with the mirror, neur mirror neurons, but we know now that it's a lot about the synaptivity about our brains and the connectivity that is really informed through movement. All the uh, studies that Calvo Merino did really show us that we kind of formate our brains through our experience. So for people who are get st got stuck and are not so resilient anymore, this might be very important experience to re recover. I have tend to say, I'm not sure whether that's the right way, but to try to recover from that. Another aspect in DMT and that we find in DMT's papers and researchers on uh, resilience is that we see that as an instrument of evaluation, very often we see the question is of life quality, for instance, or question is on resilience, and uh, that also has a lot of emotional content in the questionnaires already. And um, what we know from DMT sessions, of course, that in these movement activities, we also actualize bodily contained emotional content. So when we move, sometimes, I don't know whether you have that experience, but sometimes I have people in the, in the DMT uh, sessions who say, oh, I get such a strong, strange feeling. And then it happens to kind of uh, uh, unfold into a specific uh, uh, theme. So, like for instance, I, I had this adolescent girl of nearly 18 years, and she was really uh, uh, very fragile and very uh, uh, afraid of everything and very oh, dense and very panicking. And one day she came in and she had a panic attack right before the therapy session, so she came in very shaky and said, oh, I feel I can't really breathe. And so she was really in her body, I would say, because she felt that she couldn't breathe and she could tell me about that. And there was, so there was contact about her body feeling and she could really bring it into the session. And from that we could start to work with it, with her heartbeat and her, her heart rate that was very high and just started with very small movements from that from the breath that was very high, and we just stayed that high. And from that came, very surprisingly for me at that moment, a movement theme of moving elbows, which I really, I couldn't have thought of that, but for her it was the elbows, and she developed later on to uh, uh, an expressive theme from that, which is about, you know, you can imagine that probably, <laughs> into a, um, Wings. And she made a beautiful dance from that in her way, which was still very high, I would say, and very tense. But after that dance, she had the feeling that her breath was a little lower and that her heart rate was a little lower. So still, in my perception, I would say she was quite tensed, but in her perception, she was really already quite <laughs> um, at ease. Yeah. So. Uh, then this aspect, aspect is the last one that I wanted to share with you from and the papers in, uh, in also my personal experience in therapy, is that we always have this togetherness in the sense that are the two of us here who are making the therapy or there's are all of us here together making the therapy. It's not near the therapist alone, but we welcome in what people bring and we accept every moment that is there and we, we will be very acceptable accepting to each other and the movement material that is shared. Uh, from this I just want to share a little uh, part of a session with a group of women war survivors. Uh, eight women <coughs> from different countries who come into the dance studio and you can tell from their clothing already that they come from different cultural backgrounds and also you can hear that there's not so much verbal exchange because they are not all from the same language culture and not all of them are already as far in Dutch that they can share in Dutch with each other. So they slightly tend to look for the therapist who they know from beforehand. And, uh, they come in and they sit down because there are chairs. And they sit down in chairs. I don't know whether you can see me, otherwise you have to reach. And they sit down and they 
so they make in my they make a home base. I'm here in this chair. And from this you start to say, Oh, well done. You got to the hospital today. This is really a major achievement, isn't it? For a woman in a strange culture, not knowing the language, not knowing where to be exactly, not knowing who she will meet there. So that is really something. Really something. And finding a place again is a spot to start with. These people lived in houses with a lot of families together, all coming out this, uh, from this world. So this is a spot just for me. <clears throat> and from that we started welcoming ourselves and tapping. So we are in this body part, our first sheet on the movement material, making body boundaries. <laughs> making alignment and already some of them showed a little alignment here, not as much as I do now, <laughs> but maybe like this. So it would be already there. And from that, very strongly, we start to see and see other women over there. It's pretty far away in a circle with eight, but can you manage? <laughs> and from there, we Play the welcomed gesture. So everybody is welcomed <coughs> later on in that session. Um, we were uh, standing up in the circle, in the same circle, and this gesture, uh, actually something we did just now, didn't we? This kind of welcoming or greeting gesture towards the other was a little bit more prolonged into the space. And we decided to walk after this gesture. And just pick up again. We walk after this gesture just to the person at the other side and take her with us on the way to the next one. So from that, there was a row coming in. And <clears throat> we did support it with some music. And this <coughs> one just put very, very slowly, very gently, just walking the space holding each other's hand. <coughs> People in a really strange culture, they kind of make contact with each other. They feel the movement, they transport into the space. And in another session, this theme came back and it was really amazing to see how these women started to share about their home cultures, where they used to have this type of row dances with a woman with a, with a scarf, Ahead and the others following, so they started really playful interactions from them. in their own cultural dance material, actually, which we did in Berlin. But there, they made a new language with each other. So I just uh, give you a short, a brief thing about what participants report after these type of sessions. Uh, that is that they feel. Uh, uh, vitality, more in expressiveness. Uh, very much so, they also report about sleeping rhythms and, uh, um, and uh, they report stress and emotion regulation, <clears throat> that they can better cope and develop trust and connectivity. And that's also what I found from the material that EMTs uh, brought us. Um, I just I wanted to give you two. Two, two, two small vignettes, but I, not, I just take one side of it. Just for, the, for this moment, we will take the right side. This is a training situation, and we don't film it, and we don't uh, take photographs of it. Right? So, these are the steps, I think. Getting people into the space, getting into the movement contact, moving with them together, and... Uh, see where they come. <coughs> Conclusion. All these aspects and are working together and are really in a, in a, in a, in a holistic situation together there to, to support uh, all the elements I named. And I think that's from there we can build or, or support resilience <coughs> as DMTs. What I would wish for is that we kind of 
find the movement themes that are really researchable for that. So I think there's really a thing for, for further research to have a look and also to define our methods and how do we work with this uh, and clarify that so that we know what we are looking at in our researches and what we are looking for. And then last but not least, I really think that we need uh, 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 attention for resilience in the therapy trainings. The therapists, we really do need this capacity to adjust and to take care of our own body and our resilience. That are the things. I don't know whether there's time for questions. Well, to my experience, it's, it, it turns negative the moment it, it gets destructive for the living system. Or we get somatic complaints, the, 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 all the stuff Helen was talking about this morning, and, and all this really uh, uh, aching and the aesthetic low that comes to the body, for instance, by this uh, uh, continually uh, stressed uh, state. I have, I have a, a man in therapy who really, he, he has been really through major, major traumatization. And he sits in the, in the chair like this. And you might think, oh, well, it's a relaxed guy. It took us really quite a long time to find out that he was really tough, dense. So there's, I think, uh, an example for what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. So this helped him really through a lot. But now it really turns out. He is really so worn out, he's so tired, and he can't get away from it. He really can't get away. He is now at the point that he can realize it, that he can feel it, so there again, we have this bodily connection to be able to sense it, and then from there we can take it to work. We just, we just found out that sometimes it helps him to do this, and then he feels something happening here. He doesn't know what is happening there, but he feels something happening. Or you can feel that when we relate, when I mirror something, for instance, so we have this emotional rebalance in the arm, that he then feels something happening, but he doesn't know, but he, he feels that something is happening. So there's, I think, the point where this, uh, what, what has been uh, a, a positive, as adaptive, sorry, <laughs> positive adaptation turns into a negative and he realizes that by having complaints. <coughs> and in our type of therapy, we really want to, to get to that point where he kind of can rebalance, find balance. I mean, his it's, it's balance will be another one than mine. So, does that answer your question? Thank you. Yeah. Very challenging. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you very much. I really think there's a key word in what you said that is potential. If you get here, you get the experiential potentials and you mobilize it and activate it so you can use it, bring you first. What you said uh, for me was your emphasis on the dance. Yeah. Dance movement within the process. So I wanted to hear maybe from 
from you as a clinician, what, what aspect of diet do you think is key for us in terms of our resilience and depression? Because obviously, of all the other dynamics that we've discussed, yeah. the yeah. body, movement, yeah. what, what, what are we doing? But then, I'm actually inspired by that because I. Yes, yes. Well, I see, for myself, I make this differentiation between the material, the material is the body and the movement, and the formation of the material. So what you see in my type of therapy is, of course, the formation that takes place between me and that specific client. That might be, as well, a completely different uh, movement repertoire that, that can be challenged because completely different people come in. And I think that for movement therapists and also for training situations, what we do need that this is very um, open and sensing modus as well in what type of movement do we get in here and also a very analytic view. I think we are skilled, skilled in movement analytics like LMA and Kestenberg movement profile and other types of movement profiling to, to see what is the, the movement potential somebody brings to the session and also which are the patterns we might connect to and we can take further. So I think that is the combination to have this openness, open-mindedness to all sorts of material, movement material. I, I go break dancing with, uh, with young adults if that's what they bring in or I go to circus activities if that's what they bring in. But I would also tend to make it a dance in that sense that I think these elements that I mentioned the rhythmic adjustments in that and the phrasing of gents and the uh, collectivity, the addressing in gents that are really central categories that I think for me have to be present in dance movement therapy. That's what dance movement therapy is about. It's, and that, is, um, uh, that does come from dance as, a, as an art form. Dance is addressed always to spiritual or to the other or to dance partner or to an audience. It's always an addressed activity. And you don't have to be necessarily a dancer to understand these qualities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.